Hey, have you been reading the news lately and thinking about the crazy college admissions scandal that broke last week? If so, stay tuned. Before we get too deep into this, if you are looking to improve your chances to get into college and you are not really that interested in bribery, I have a solution and that is to prep. We have a couple of online prep courses which encompass everything on the SAT and everything on the ACT. They're available at supertutortv.com. I personally have scored perfectly on both exams myself. I've been tutoring for over a decade and I've helped students get into top schools with the scores that they've gotten on these exams. I've even coached a student to a perfect score, another student to a perfect super score. So go check out those courses. We also recently released our ACT math books and those are available at amazon.com. So if you're looking for math help, those can be a great resource. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, join our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe, and we'll keep you posted on any new things, giveaways, like fun, exciting news from us. So let's get into this. The first thing that I'm gonna say is a lot of people have asked me, Brooke, are you shocked? Like, is this shocking to you? Or did you expect this, right? There are parts of this news that are totally shocking to me. And there are other parts that are really par for the course. There certainly is a lot of privilege that goes with wealth when it comes to college admissions. I, hands down, I can attest to that. That is absolutely true because as a tutor, I'm not cheap. Um, and neither are most of the elite private tutors that I know. Like this business, you know, people pay a lot of money in order to help get their kids a higher test score. But paying someone to teach your kid is a lot different than paying someone to take the test for your kid or to completely cheat on their exam. At least that's how I feel. So I'm gonna to try to get into that discussion and break that down. Like what are the norms in like the college admission scene and what are the elements of that scene that certainly ring true to a lot of the motivations and a lot of the things that were going on here. And then at what point does this become kind of surprising? I can get into that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down this corruption into three categories. And basically, those categories are one, gaming the system, two, bending the rules, and three, breaking the rules. So the first category that I would peg out in the college admissions game is what I call gaming the system. Now, the thing about gaming the system is it's not illegal. It just means that you're using all the resources you have within the boundaries of the rules to get ahead as much as you can. What does that look like? What does gaming the system look like? It, it looks like hiring lots of tutors for your kids so that they have one-on-one -on -one instruction, somebody in their face making sure that they're learning constantly, right? Sharing all the secrets of the tests with them. Extensive college consulting and essay coaching. That means they have somebody sitting across the desk from them who like talks them through their life story. Then they assign them to do drafts of their college essays. Heck, I've had some essay students whose parents have invested tens of thousands of dollars in um, having their kid come in every week and write draft after draft after draft. I'm not writing those essays for those kids, but I certainly am pushing them to do better and do better and do better. And you've got to think that when a kid writes like 20 drafts of his common application essay, it's going to be a heck of a lot better than a kid who just writes it in his bedroom, doesn't show it to anybody and sends it in, right? Like that's clearly an advantage. It's kind of a huge advantage. So I have very, you know, motivated parents who will fight to do anything possible to help get their kids in these schools. That part of the story doesn't surprise me. I know parents will go to great lengths. Next up, fluff internships from your parents, well-connected friends. So the other thing that rich kids can get is they can get their parents to get them really cool internships. They can call someone up at a really cool company. And as a teenager, they can go get an internship there. And then that person who's like semi-famous in their field can write them a letter of recommendation. Calling your buddies on the school's board of trustees. If you are friends with the rich people who sort of are on the board of trustees for a school, you can potentially get preference or get your a little letter of recommendation from one of those trustees thrown in the mix with your kid's application. And sometimes that can push you over the edge. That's something that I know parents do. In the same vein, people who have connections with deans at different schools can possibly land in-person interviews when other people only can get alumni interviews. That can be an advantage. And finally, and I think this is pretty well known, if you give a really huge institutional donation to a university, or if you're an alum and you're giving to that university, you can also potentially get your kids on preference lists. There are two other categories of people who are trying to kind of leverage themselves and get an edge in college admissions. And those are the two categories I'm gonna launch into now. 
The second category is what I call bending the rules. So there are definitely people out there, and I know because I've run into them, who really want to push the limit and bend the rules. Examples of bending the rules. Those are kids who basically call up the college board and get extra time at the test when they probably don't need extra time. But Americans with Disabilities Act is very protective of people with disabilities. You can't challenge people on their disabilities. If the doctor says they have a disability, you can't fight them on that. That's not the way the system works. And so we have to trust these people who are doctors to make good decisions and not to bend the rules for people. And at the same time, I'm not part of the, the system that chooses who gets extra time. I'm not part of that, but I can understand why the College Board and the ACT have a difficult time figuring out who's legitimate and who's not. It's gotta be heard. I don't know what the solution is to that whole extra time debacle, but I would say this is definitely a great area. It was definitely part of the scheme that they were using to try to cheat on the SAT and the ACT. They first got the kids extra time, and then after they got the kids extra time, they were able to then bribe people and cheat. I don't know if anyone would ever have been prosecuted by the FBI for just getting extra time. I don't think that would have ever happened. But it's that cheating part that they worked into the back end that really made it illegal. The other kind of gray area thing that I think is really common in college admissions is actually writing essays for people. I do coach people in their college essays. I think that going through that process with a college consultant certainly is going to help you and it certainly gives you an advantage in the college admissions process. That I totally admit. But I do not allow students to email me stuff and then say, hey, will you just write my whole essay for me? That's not my game. I don't do that. And I certainly every year have somebody who wants to do it that way. They're like, my daughter's too busy. She has too many activities. Can you just rewrite her essay for her? I do not do that. And I will not do that. And that is where I draw on. And to me, that is totally, you know, it's gray area. There's these services online that you just like mail in your essay and then they pop your essay back to you. They're like automated. You know, it's like a machine. They like, pop your essay in. People edit it. It's kind of dodgy. And then you get an essay back. And I've looked at the examples on some of these websites, and the examples look nothing like the original essay. It's not just like they, they corrected the comma errors and like a few grammar mistakes. It's like, it sounds like a totally different story, right? Like totally different human being. So I know that that goes on. That's pretty obvious to me. And like, at what point, if somebody else is writing your essay for you, like at what point does it become criminal? And at what point is it just dodgy? I think there is a gray area in there and that whole extra time thing, right? So anyhow. There you go, bending the rules, category number two. And then we get to category number three, which is breaking the rules. I do not think this is the norm in college admissions. I do not think most college consultants are going to this degree to try to get kids in. Do I think college consultants are trying to game the system? Absolutely, that first list, absolutely, 100%. Everybody's out there doing that. Yes, there's lots of people doing that. And the more money people have, the more they're gaming the system. Do I think that the people are bribing lots of athletic officials across the country? I, I don't think this is a hugely widespread trend. That's not to say that there aren't other people who are dodgy like this guy who are not engaging in this kind of thing. But as a professional in this realm, I have not heard of this kind of activity being super widespread in the United States. My caveat to that is in the United States. I have heard of a culture that is very similar to this coming out of China where test prep is like the expected norm, right? Everybody's doing test prep. But within that system, I've also read articles about how a lot of activities, a lot of grades from the Chinese system have been faked on many student profiles. So that in some ways I've, I've heard of being very normal in China, even sort of these cheating scandals, that's why they took the SAT and the ACT completely out of China. You can't take them in mainland China anymore. You have to fly to a different country and go on a vacation. We talk about all this in our two videos on how to cheat on the SAT and how to cheat on the ACT. What I do is I basically break down a lot of the scandals that have happened, um, many of which have been based in Asia. So I have known that these kind of cheating scandals have totally happened in Asia. I had no idea that Proctor enabled cheating was going on in the United States. I knew that there was impersonation cheating going on in the United States. There was a whole ring that was captured on the East Coast several years back, of kids who were cheating on tests and they had people taking the exam for them. That's why they've upped the security on the SAT and the ACT. Now you have to have a photo and you have to have a photo ID and they have to match. And then they have like a printout of all of your photos and they're checking everybody's photo as you walk in the door. They check your ID, they check your photo, they make sure you're the person who you are so that you don't cheat. But I think what was really shocking to me was to see this level of a cheating scandal that literally was taking place four and a half blocks away from where I lived for probably eight years of my life during the time when this company was operating. So that's the part that's like really shocking to me that it's literally down the street from me. I had no idea that this culture of cutthroat, like, you know, pay off people at the ACT, SAT testing center and bribe a bunch of athlete coaches 
was actually like right under my nose. So in that sense, I did find that very surprising. I also found the celebrity aspect of this surprising. You would think that they could just call enough friends and like call the dean or something. And it's not shocking how much people pay to get their kids into college. I certainly have parents who spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on tutors and all of these things. You know, even like pay to play, you know, they send their kids to camp at Brown and all these other places and they spend tens of thousands of dollars on those and then they pay for private fencing lessons or tennis lessons or whatever it is. I mean, there's all sorts of ways that people who have money are gaming the system. But I think the, the fact that they're spending this money on crimes, that's the part that I didn't expect, I'll be honest. So I hope you found this insightful or thoughtful. What do you think of this whole situation? Go ahead and post your comments below. I hope that at least what I can do is that I have a YouTube channel. So I know I share a lot of my secrets with the kids that I sit across the desk with. And of course, I, I don't have time to sit across the desk from every single one of my YouTube subscribers. But I hope at least that in sharing the kinds of strategies that I have that are like just legit strategies on how to be smart in getting into college, I can help some of you guys and maybe share some of that advantage, at least on a basic level, to help you guys out. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Head to supertutortv.com. Check out our prep courses. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I need to get better at Instagramming. In any case, I'll see you guys later. Bye.